Good evening, Martian. Francisco, how are you today? Good evening, teacher. Good evening, how are you? Hi, uh, good evening, teacher. Hi. I am driving dead, but around 10 minutes, I will be around, I will be Getting arriving. home. Oh, arriving yeah. home. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thank you for letting us know. Drive safe. Okay, thank you so much. Are you at home already, Francisco? How was your day? Did you have a good day today? Carlos, thank you so much for joining today early. How was your day? A tired teacher. A tired. Do you have a heavy day at work? What? Did you have a heavy day at work? A lot of work today? Yes. All right. Um, so, and do you work on weekends or only weekdays? Um, the weekend. Oh, you work on weekends too? Yes. Oh, wow. Only Saturday or Saturday and Sunday? Uh, Saturday and Sunday. So you rest weekdays? Descanso es día de semana, ¿o, o, o you never rest? Um, the Saturday, uh, Sunday, um, descanso en las mañanas. Oh, okay. Ya las, a las, oh. ya las 16 horas ya voy a trabajar nuevamente. That's really heavy. Yes. Okay, you need to find a way, uh, a way to, to relax and to rest <laughs> during those times. I know we started, I don't know why, but I think especially Thursday, I feel really, really tired. <laughs> I don't know why. Is that the same for you? Okay, Carlos is still going home. You're on the way <clears throat> home. Okay. Okay, thank you for letting us know. Um, I see that Elizabeth and Carla joined too. Thank you so much for being on time. As for today, we will finish with the passive voice. Uh, we, we are Focusing on the passive voice in the simple past, we will continue um, working like the same as yesterday. And tomorrow we will continue with direct and indirect requests. We're missing transition words, other clauses of time, and the present perfect. Let me know if you are interested in a specific topic so that I can prepare the review for tomorrow. We are still uh, missing direct and indirect requests and questions, transition word, and also adverb clauses of time and the present perfect. I think that the present perfect, you, you handled that topic excellent. That's really good. And uh, let's see, I, someone wrote a question here. Oh, right, that, that, that means because you're really tired, maybe. <laughs> yes. Okay, so let me know if there is one specific topic that you would like to review today. 
Uh, well, tomorrow, sorry, direct and indirect requests and questions, transition work, or other classes of time. We are missing like, uh, yes, two days of classes today and two more. So, yes. We're going to start sharing. Let's see. Yesterday we were practicing a conversation about um, going to Europe, the currency that is used there. So as you see, we stopped here, okay? We practiced this conversation and then we have this exercise in which we're going to use the passive without by in simple present, it says um, we have the simple present, use the present of be plus the past participle of the verb, okay? In some cases, we need the passive voice in the simple present, depende, ¿verdad? A veces necesitamos usarla en presente simple, como por ejemplo con la conversación que estábamos viendo ayer, la veíamos en presente simple, también estuvimos viendo la voz pasiva en pasado simple, Y con eso vamos a seguir el día de hoy. Um, ayer practicamos esta conversación en la que pregunta qué moneda es utilizada en Europa. Eh, ¿Cuál es el, eh, que si es inglés, el, el lenguaje que ahí es hablado? Entonces, por eso, simple present, porque es para fact. Eh, para hechos, eh, datos en sí, ¿verdad? No, no necesitamos en pasado, so, por eso estábamos usando a simple present passive voice. Y esta como nos indica ahí la um, la cajita del grammar se, se utiliza en con el verbo to be meaning um, is, are y el pasado participio del verbo principal. Entonces tenemos este ejercicio ahí para ir completando. Y ahí, pues, eh, es lo que está en la presentación. Esto es lo que vamos a estar trabajando, un poquito listening, eh, un poquito de estructura. Y al final, lectura comprensiva. Y ahí, pues, nomás presentándoles el material en la PowerPoint. Eh, pero ahora voy a compartir eh, de dónde sacamos esto para tener el audio. Así no me escuchan solo a mí. Vamos a escuchar el audio del material. And yes, let me share sound. Okay, we're going to listen uh, the grammar focus box for you to listen and pronounce these sentences at home. Always with microphones off. And let me know if you have any question about vocabulary or pronunciation. I'm going to play the recording. You can repeat at home. Page 75, exercise nine, grammar focus. Passive without by, simple present. For the simple present, use the present of be plus past participle. Active. They use the euro in most of Europe. Passive. The euro is used in most of Europe. Active. They speak English in many European countries. Passive. English is spoken in many European countries. Active. They manufacture a lot of cars in Europe.
passive. A lot of cars are manufactured in Europe. Okay, there we have the listening part and pronunciation. Do you have any question? As there are no questions, we're going to continue completing the passage that you are looking at and using the simple present passive, as you can see in this part. And it's been explained that you're going to use the present of B is or are, and the main verb, which is in parentheses, we need it in past participle. You can write the sentences on your notebook, preferable, so that you can practice your writing and the complete structure. So, for example, the first one would be many crops is or are and then the verb what is the past participle of crow grown many Crops are grown in Taiwan. Así nos quedaría la primera oración. Many crops are grown in Taiwan. Then you will continue doing the same to complete the passage. You can do it in your notebook, preferable, or you can work only with the uh, with the missing parts. I'll give you time, let me know when you're ready.
finished finish excellent would you like to read the second sentence some crops some crops are consuming locally but Let's... other uh -huh. but other areas are in area exported excellent thank you so much mario some crops are consumed locally but others are exported uh yes volunteer to continue t me <clears throat> thank you aymara t is grown in color parts of the island and rice is cultivated in in warmer parts excellent aymara so you can see the answers here excellent Tea is grown in cooler parts of the island. Rice is cultivated in warmer parts. Excellent. Who wants to continue? Fishing? Fishing is also an important industry. Volunteer to continue. A wide, a wide variety of seafood is caught and shipped all over the world. Excellent. <laughs> a wide variety of seafood is caught and shipped all over the world. Excellent. Thank you so much, Mario. Who wants to continue? Many people. Many people. Nobody has that one. Many people. Many to many people are employed in electronic and textile industries as well. Excellent. Are employed. Very good. Excellent. Thank you so much for the answers, Mario. Now let's see what's next. Our next exercise is this. We're going to complete using the passive of these verbs. We have go, make up, manufacture, rise, speak, and use. So for number one, for example, I think it's too big, <laughs> too big for the screen. Okay. Mm -hmm. Complete the sentence using the passive of the verb. For the first sentence, French and English in Canada. I think that the verb that we need to use is speak, but in passive, Siempre seguimos con la passive in presente. English, oh, sorry, French and English. Are spoken. Canada. Are spoken. Uh -huh. Number one, are spoken.
Okay, number two, volunteer, a lot of rice. Do you still work me more time? Are you still working? Do you need more time? A lot of rice is going on in Vietnam. Excellent. A lot of rice is grown in Vietnam. Thank you so much. Number three. Somebody has the number three. Number three, a volunteer. The US. The United States, the US. The US is made up of 50 states. Yes, excellent. It's made up. Very good. Thank you so much, Maria. A lot of chip. Number four. A lot of sheep are raised in New Zealand. Excellent. Are raised in New Zealand. Excellent. Thank you so much, Abigail. Number five, car and components. Car and computers. Cars and, and computer computers are manufactured in Korea. Excellent. Are manufactured. And uh, thank you so much, Aymara. Yes, thank you so much. And number six, the US dollar. The US dollar is used in Ecuador. Excellent. Thank you so much, Abigail. Thank you. Now we completed this one successfully. And now we have this listening exercise. Um, it is also in the presentation. Let's see. This listening is about Colombia. We're going to listen to a short talk about Colombia and we will have to complete the chart the, about facts about Colombia. Um, if you have not the material printed, you can uh, write in your notebook facts about Colombia and then write location, population, language, industries, and agricultural products. I'll give it time for you to write on your notebook. Then I'm going to play the recording twice or three times so that you can complete the chart.
teacher, sorry, vamos a escuchar o vamos a contestar. Yes, Creo vamos a escucharlo. Ajá, vamos a escucharlo. Ahorita eh, no sé si ya terminaron de escribir lo que van a completar. Ah, ok. Que no, no, no todos tienen impreso este cuadrito, entonces les estaba dando tiempo para que escribieran lo que está ahí, los Facts About Colombia, y luego vamos a ir completando. Are you ready for listening? Everybody ready? Okay, I will play the recording and remember we need to complete the location, population, language, industry, and agricultural products. I'm going to play the recording two or three times for you to complete it. So listen. Page 76, exercise 10, listening, Colombia. Part A. Listen to a short talk about Colombia. Complete the chart. Colombia is located in the northwestern part of South America and is the fourth largest country in South America. It has coastlines on both the Atlantic and the Pacific Oceans. It has a population of around 45 million and is a very beautiful country with snow-capped mountains as well as hot lowland plains. The capital city is Bogota. Spanish is spoken by nearly all Colombians and it is the country's official language. Many religions are practiced, but the religion of the majority of the population is Roman Catholic. Some of the most important industries are textiles and clothing. Other industries include mining and oil. Agriculture is the most important section of the economy, and Colombia's main agricultural products are coffee, flowers, sugar, bananas, rice, corn, and cotton. The coffee that is grown and exported is delicious. In fact, Colombia produces more coffee than any other country except Brazil and Vietnam. Page 76, Exercise 10, Listening, Colombia. Part A. Listen to a short talk about Colombia. Complete the chart. Colombia is located in the northwestern part of South America and is the fourth largest country in South America. It has coastlines on both the Atlantic and the Pacific Oceans. It has a population of around 45 million and is a very beautiful country with snow-capped mountains as well as hot lowland plains. The capital city is Bogota. Spanish is spoken by nearly all Colombians and it is the country's official language. Many religions are practiced, but the religion of the majority of the population is Roman Catholic. Some of the most important industries are textiles and clothing. Other industries include mining and oil. Agriculture is the most important section of the economy, and Colombia's main agricultural products are coffee, flowers, sugar, bananas, rice, corn, and cotton. 
the coffee that is grown and exported is delicious. In fact, Colombia produces more coffee than any other country except Brazil and Vietnam. Lots of agricultural products. <laughs> Did you complete the chart? Uh, you want to listen one more time? One more time, please. Okay. <clears throat> Page 76, exercise 10. Listening. Colombia. Part A. Listen to a short talk about Colombia. Complete the chart. <laughs> Colombia is located in the northwestern part of South America and is the fourth largest country in South America. It has coastlines on both the Atlantic and the Pacific Oceans. It has a population of around 45 million and is a very beautiful country with snow-capped mountains as well as hot lowland plains. The capital city is Bogota. Spanish is spoken by nearly all Colombians and it is the country's official language. Many religions are practiced, but the religion of the majority of the population is Roman Catholic. Some of the most important industries are textiles and clothing. Other industries include mining and oil. Agriculture is the most important section of the economy, and Colombia's main agricultural products are coffee, flowers, sugar, bananas, rice, corn, and cotton. The coffee that is grown and exported is delicious. In fact, Colombia produces more coffee than any other country except Brazil and Vietnam. Ready? Did you get all the information? Okay, let's see, location. And north is the Sudamerica. North of Sudamerica. Northwestern. Yes, Northwestern South America. With coast on the Atlantic and Pacific Oceans. I love this again, oh, bien, bien. I know northwestern part of South America. Oh, good. Thank you so much. Now, population. 45, 45. 45 million. 45. 45. Around 45 million. Excellent language. Spanish. 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 Industries. English. Industries, textiles, textiles. and clothing. Other industries include mining and oil. Ah, very good. It's uh, textiles and clothing. Other industries, mining and oil. Very good. Excellent. You included more details. Now, agricultural products. Coffee, rice, rice banana, corn, sugar, banana, coffee, flowers, flowers, flowers. rice, uh -huh. corn, rice, corn, cotton. Excellent. <laughs> A large list, right? So we have coffee, flour, sugar, bananas, rice, corn, and cotton. Excellent. You've got almost all. Very good. So you're good listeners. Okay. I'm going to stop sharing for a little while. So because we need to check attendance. When we check attendance, we'll continue with our listening exercises. Oh, let me get the file. Mm. Mm -hmm. Abigail Elizabeth Flores. Okay. Present teacher. Sí, ma. Abigail Mejia Mendoza. Present teacher. Thank you, Abby. Oh, you're still here. 
God. Um, Carlos Alberto Castro. Present teacher. Thank you. Carlos Emilio Cotto. Present teacher. Thank you. Carlos Humberto Estrada. Thank you, Carlos Humberto. I see your message in the chat. Um, Cecilia Noemi. Cecilia Noemi Ramos. Present teacher. Thank you. Francisco Ernesto. Present teacher. Thank you. Person Alexis. Present coach. Thank you. Gertrude Saimara. Present teacher. Thank you. Hazel Vanessa. Julissa Yamilet. Present teacher. Thank you so much. Okay, thank you so much. Carla Ivania. Present teacher. Thank you. Luis Javier. Yeah, miss. Thank you. Matiel Esaú. Present teacher. Thank you. Marilyn Alejandra. Present. Thank you, Marilyn. Mario Ernesto. Present. Thank you. Melanie Alexandra. Melanie Alexandra. Samuel Antonio. Santos Cristina. Present teacher. Thank you. Victor Noé. Present. Thank you, Victor. Teacher. Thank you so much. Okay. Let me say a little bit. Okay, let's continue with our listening part. We have a new on screen again. Okay, we will listen again and complete this information. Let's see, listen again and check the things that the speaker mentions about Colombia. We have beaches, rivers, volcanoes, lakes, snow-capped mountains, hot long plains. You can write the things on your notebook and then we will proceed to listen and check the things that they mentioned. de lo que escuchamos, teacher. Yes. I don't remember, teacher. <laughs> to play the audio again. Have you written the um the things? ¿Ya escribieron las cosas? Beaches, rivers, yes. volcanoes. Okay. I'm going to play the recording again and check. Okay. Page 76, exercise 10. Part B. Listen again. Check the things the speaker mentions about Colombia. 
Colombia is located in the northwestern part of South America and is the fourth largest country in South America. It has coastlines on both the Atlantic and the Pacific Oceans. It has a population of around 45 million and is a very beautiful country with snow-capped mountains as well as hot lowland plains. The capital city is Bogota. Spanish is spoken by nearly all Colombians and it is the country's official language. Many religions are practiced, but the religion of the majority of the population is Roman Catholic. Some of the most important industries are textiles and clothing. Other industries include mining and oil. Agriculture is the most important section of the economy, and Colombia's main agricultural products are coffee, flowers, sugar, bananas, rice, corn, and cotton. The coffee that is grown and exported is delicious. In fact, Colombia produces more coffee than any other country except Brazil and Vietnam. Can you check the things that they mentioned or you want to listen one more time? One more time. Page 76, Exercise 10, Part B. Listen again. Check the things the speaker mentions about Colombia. Colombia is located in the northwestern part of South America and is the fourth largest country in South America. It has coastlines on both the Atlantic and the Pacific Oceans. It has a population of around 45 million and is a very beautiful country with snow-capped mountains as well as hot lowland plains. The capital city is Bogota. Spanish is spoken by nearly all Colombians and it is the country's official language. Many religions are practiced, but the religion of the majority of the population is Roman Catholic. Some of the most important industries are textiles and clothing. Other industries include mining and oil. Agriculture is the most important section of the economy, and Colombia's main agricultural products are coffee, flowers, sugar, bananas, rice, corn, and cotton. The coffee that is grown and exported is delicious. In fact, Colombia produces more coffee than any other country except Brazil and Vietnam. Okay, what are the things that the speaker mentioned? Colombia tiene playa. Sí. Mm. Mm. They mentioned coast. Nobody checked the things? Yo no escuché ninguna, teacher. Teacher, right. pero... pero... <laughs> Es, ella, 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 había que buscar los, lo que hablaba de los volcanes, los lagos, los ríos, las... No, son like. estas que están aquí en la parte B. Si son beaches, rivers, volcanoes, lake. Pero eso no lo menciona para nada. Creo que es la, la parte es B. Es el la mismo audio. Porque Anterior. está poniendo la, el audio de la 1 y, y en ese solo habla de, de la agricultura. Ajá, ese. Ok, voy a ponerlo otra vez. Page 76, Exercise 10, Part B. Listen again. Check the things the speaker mentions about Colombia. Colombia is located in the northwestern part of South America and is the fourth largest country in South America. It has coastlines on both the Atlantic and the Pacific Oceans. It has a population of around 45 million and is a very beautiful country with snow-capped mountains as well as hot lowland plains. The capital city is Bogota. Spanish is spoken by nearly all Colombians and it is the country's official language. Many religions are practiced, but the religion of the majority of the population is Roman Catholic. Some of the most important industries are textiles and clothing. 
Other industries include mining and oil. Agriculture is the most important section of the economy, and Colombia's main agricultural products are coffee, flowers, sugar, bananas, rice, corn, and cotton. The coffee that is grown and exported is delicious. In fact, Colombia produces more coffee than any other country except Brazil and Vietnam. Okay, what are the two things that mentioned? Branches, uh, the snow cut the mountain. Uh huh. And oh, I see. <laughs> and let, uh, how low, how low, how, how low and low and climb. Uh huh. And mentioned beaches or coastline, as Amir, Amara said, she said beaches, que son las coastlines, uh, snow cape mountains, and hot lowland plains. That's it. <laughs> and that this is speaking really fast, and it's it's okay to get lost sometimes. Um. Now, to complete, uh, let me make this smaller because it's too big. Okay, we have these readings and they are about unusual museums. <laughs> it is also in the PowerPoint. Give me one second. I need water. Okay, now, um, a uh, guide to unusual museums. We have three different museums and we continue practicing the passive voice and we will see that in this um, three paragraphs. The Kimchi Museum in Seoul, South Korea. I volunteer to read this number, it says number two. The Kimchi Museum in Seoul, South Korea. Volunteer? Me. Thank you, Aymara. Okay. The Kimchi Museum, Seoul, South Korea. If you don't know about Kimchi, a trip to, a trip to the Kimchi Museum is an a opening and experience. The museum was founded in 1986 to highlight South Korea's rich kimchi culture. The exhibit includes displays of cooking utensils and materials related to sewing and eating the famous pickle vegetables. The museum also provides details about the history and nutritional benefits of, of South Korea's most beloved side dish. Finally, a stop by the souvenir, souvenir, souvenir? Shop, souvenir shop to try various types of kimchi. Wow, sounds really interesting and delicious. Thank you so much, Aymara, for reading. Um, we have a couple of words here that were like mispronounced. I, I experience, experience, uh, utensil, utensils. Uh, Provides, provides, only those five. Excellent, thank you so much, Aymara. And then we have the Museum of Gold in Bogota, Colombia. Volunteer? Me, teacher. Thank you, Abigail. The Museum of Gold, Bogota, Colombia. If you want to see beautiful, beautiful objects, the Museum of Coal is the place. It holds one of South America's most stunning collections because the exhibits sparkle so brightly. 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 You can actually take four photographs 
without using a flash on your camera. Not everything is made of cold. So, among the exhibit, exhibits are ancient pre-Columbian items, items. Many of them are made from a mixture of coal and copper now as tumbaga. Tum tumbaga. Oh, tumbaga. <laughs> Very interesting. That's nice. It sounds interesting. Thank you so much for reading. Um, let's see. You were self-correcting you. <laughs> so that's good. Uh -huh. And that is, um, yes, a matter of continuing practicing. So thank you so much, Abigail. Now, the Chocolate Museum, Cologne, Germany. I'm getting hungry. Volunteer? It's really about the Chocolate Museum. Me, coach. This is... <clears throat> Okay, uh, the Chocolate Museum will teach you everything about chocolate from cocoa bean to candy bars. You learn about chocolate uh, three, three, three mil year history and discover how it was one juicy money in South America. All right, chocolate factory show you, you how chocolate is made. After you finished uh, the tour, you can simple a complimentary drink of rich way for chocolate, perfect for those with a sweet tooth. All right, very good. Thank you so much for reading, Alexis. Excellent job. So, which of these museums would you like to visit? Oh, a hard decision. <laughs> Okay, well, uh, we have another an exercise related to this. Uh, we have to read the article and find the words in italics. Let me stop sharing or start a new share. I think I can do that. All right, here is the presentation. We already did this really. In the PowerPoint, you have the reading and then the exercise that we have related to that reading mm, and see. We have to find the words in the below and then circle the meaning of each word or phrase. Mm -hmm. It says, when you go off the beaten path, you do something unusual or you go somewhere far, far away. You have to discover what is the meaning of those phrases. When you go off the beaten path, what is that exactly? That you do something unusual or that you go somewhere far, far away? You will underline or circle what is the meaning of that phrase. The ones that are involved are you have to select one accordingly, right? And then in the exercise B, where did this sentence below? Write the number of the paragraph or where each sentence could go. You can do that in group. I'm going to create a breakout room. So maybe you will need to read back or to do a, maybe a surf the net to get at the proper responses. Or maybe you can read, analyze, and try to guess. Let me stop sharing and create the breakout rooms.
No me permite. No me permite compartir la pantalla. Me too. One Me too. second, one second, sorry. Okay. Thanks. Okay, now you can share. Hello. The first I think is go somewhere far away. What? Uh, when you go off the beating path, you go somewhere far away. 
the second. Pero me bueno, dice lea el artículo y encuentre las, las palabras que están en... ahí está cursiva aquí no está pidiendo que y encierre un círculo la, la definición uh -huh. de cada palabra frase Aunque sí, when do you walk the hidden path to somewhere far away? Eh, sí, ya, pero cambia el artículo. Yo digo que la primera parte, ajá, es así dice, que hay que poner en círculo. Uh -huh. Y la segunda parte es la, lo que, que dice usted. Exacto, tiene razón. El literal B dice, ¿a dónde pertenecen estas oraciones? Escribe el número del párrafo donde podré ir cada frase. Ajá, eso sí es del párrafo que dice usted. Ajá. Don Javier. Number two sería Little B. No. Así le había entendido. Ah, o sea, la uno. Ah, ahorita ya están en allá abajo. Francisco está en la dos, en la, en la parte B y, y no hemos hecho ni nada. Ok. Ajá, pero si lo agarramos así, literal, que se pide de algo, sale el artículo. Cuenta las palabras. Dale. Ah, el chat. Eso decía de el artículo en el artículo. Eh... Para la primera parte, les mencionaba que podemos leer el artículo y tratar de ver si con eso podemos eh, completar el primer ejercicio, la parte A. Y si no, podemos auxiliarnos del buscador del navegador, usar internet eh, para buscar when you go off the beaten path lo pueden ver ahí se los puse en el chat en la meeting es un idioma You see it? Mm -hmm. 
¿Ya vieron el, en el chat la definición de of the beaten path? Es como salir de la rutina. Salir de la rutina, ajá. O fuera hacer algo fuera de lo común. Uh -huh. I think there is uh, do you something unusual. Ajá, do something unusual. Ese sería. Y también les puse ahí un, un ejemplo usando esa frase. The restaurant we went to was really off the beaten path. But the food was amazing. The number two is discover it. Because when something something is found, it is discovered. Mm. No, it is started. Sí. Ajá, cuando algo es fundado. Es porque se inicia. Ajá, it is started. Ajá. Entonces ya tenemos, la uno sería do something unusual. Number two, it is started. Y así vamos. Para la parte B, cuando lleguen a la parte B, faltaba el párrafo uno o la parte uno. Ahí se las puse también en el chat de la media. The number two, when something is doing, it is extremely attractive. Yes. Attractive. Mm -hmm. Yes. When something is stunning, it is extremely attractive. Stunning. Number four is. Very old. Very old. Correct. Very old. Number five, Number five yeah. is free of charge. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Free of charge. The sick and something is joy is a big thing. Mm -hmm. Thick and sticky. Mm -hmm. Es grueso y pegajoso. When something is good, it's thick and sticky.
teacher, disculpe, ¿dónde colocó el párrafo? I'm sorry. ¿Dónde colocó el párrafo? Eh, el number, ah, el párrafito que faltaba, que era el número uno, se los puse en el chat de la meeting. Ok, thank you. Ajá, lo mandé antes del significado de, de, de go off the beaten path. Es una cosita bien pequeña. Naranja. Thank you. Ya. Yeah. And we see the rest of the restaurant we went to watch really of the beginning part, but the food tastes amazing. Uno ha estado en el Louvre en París, el Museo Nacional de Antropología en la Ciudad de México, o cualquiera de esos otros museos de visita obligada. Bueno, ahora es el momento de salir del camino trillado. Diapositiva 7 de 927 se despejado doctores.
Okay. Um, it is the exercise that we were working in, the letter A. Let us check what you have. It says, uh, when you go off the beaten path, what is the phrase that best complete in number one or the real meaning of that? When you go off the beaten path, It means that you do something unusual or you go someone far, far away. Something unusual. That is correct. You do something unusual. Good, thank you. Now, when something is founded, what is the meaning of that? When something is founded? Is it started. Excellent, it's started. Number three, when something is stunning, Mm, attractive. It is extremely attractive. Excellent. If it's when something is ancient, very old. That's correct. Excellent. When something is complementary, free of charge. Excellent. Free of charge. Uh, when something is going. Stick and uh, sticky. Excellent, that is correct. Now, did you write the number of the paragraph where this um this sentence could go? Don't forget to buy your favorite kind to bring home for dinner. ¿A dónde, en qué párrafo podría ir esa? What do you think? The only two paragraphs that talks about food or can be number two or four. Son los dos y cuatro. Mira que estaba en uno, pero está chiquitito, no se miraba bien. Eh, uh -huh. Number two and, and, and four. Aquí están los números de párrafo, dos y cuatro. Son los únicos que hablan de comida, aunque bueno, el cuatro no es comida realmente. But what do you think? Dónde, ¿En cuál de esos dos podría ir esta? Don't forget to buy your favorite kind to bring home for dinner. Number two. Mm, yes, probably. Let's see. Yes, correct. Number two, did you know that it wasn't popular in Europe until the 19th century? ¿Cuál no era muy popular en Europa? ¿De qué hablamos? Ah, si habla de Europa, ¿qué párrafo sería? Mm. 
Number number one, and it says, have you been to the Louvre Paris, the National Museum of Anthropology in Mexico City uh, or any other must-see museum? Well, now it is time to go off the beaten path. Uh, entonces, no creo que sea el párrafo uno. ¿En cuál podría ir? Did you know that it wasn't popular in Europe until the 19th century? Number four, teacher. Excellent. Number four. That's the answer. Number, well, letter B, it could be in number four. Now it says letter C. The museum also features coins, jewelry, and pieces of rare art. ¿Cuál de esas será? Podría ser. Number three. Exactly, number three. And let's see, the last one, letter D says, there are some museums that try to be a little different. Number one. Mm -hmm. Number one, excellent. So yes, así nos debió quedar. Two, four, three, one. That's for part B. Okay, so. Mm -hmm. Now uh, we finish with that and so Let's review and start wrapping up this topic. Filling in the blank. This is a fill in the blank exercise. But um, let me see. Oh, my head working times have changed. That's what I would say. Passive without by simple present. Ah. Let me see this one. Mm. Others are passive, but pero ajá, no quería uno de typing porque es muy tardado. <laughs> Así que un multiple choice será mejor. Okay, so we have this multiple choice, passive without by in simple present. So tenemos que ir completando. Esto es lo que hemos estado haciendo. Passive voice con simple present and simple past. Estos ejercicios son con el passive voice and simple present. Y tenemos tres opciones para completar lo que vemos en la pantalla. Calls um, in the Western United States. Passive voice. What do you think? It's raised, are raised, or is raised? A volunteer who would like to I, have the remote control? I think are, are raised. Okay, click on your answer. Excellent, that's it. You can click next. Wait. <laughs> Okay, try that one. A lot of seafood in Japan. Seafood. A lot of seafood. Excellent, Luis. A lot of seafood is eaten in Japan. Uh-huh. 
Neuer is used in most of Europe. Ok. Um, ¿Quiere hacer ese o, o vemos si alguien más quiere participar? Sorry, que, que participe alguien más. <laughs> Me emocioné. <laughs> no, that's fine. <laughs> Excellent. Thank you so much. A volunteer. A veces estamos escasos de voluntarios. Si nadie lo quiere, pues seguimos. Ok, Mario. Vamos a ver, Mario. Por ahí, Mario. Ok, Mario. Vamos a hacer unas tres, Mario. Las tres siguientes y luego vemos si alguien más quiere. Range. Excellent. It's spoken in some North African countries. Mm -hmm. In California, many people in the computer industry. Mm. <laughs> Lo vi que iba para la primera, our employee. Se me movió. Mm, sí, que vi que iba bien. Sí, se movió. Uh, no, no queremos ver la historia del albañil. <laughs> Next. Aha, uh -huh, good. Electronics and cards are exported from Korea. Good, it's made up. And the last one, click next. Nos queda una más. Most of the Earth's surface is covered by oceans. Very good. Thank you so much, Maria. Let's stop uh, the remote control. And we're going to look for another exercise. The other ones are typing. So, but if, um, what is it? If it works in. Ah, this is drag and drop. Este es de arrastrar, entonces, ajá. Uh -huh. No es tan tardado como estar escribiendo. Eh, drag and drop passive without by simple present. A volunteer for this one. We have uh, three um, words here. One is extra. There is one extra word. So I think that for the first one, everybody uses laptops in class. Tablet computers are brought into the classroom too. Is it okay? Okay, yes. Volunteer for the next one? Volunteer? Okay, Mario, I'll give you the control. No. Mm -hmm. Excellent, very good, Mario. So we see here, what does China export to other countries? Rice is cultivated to China and clothing is made in many parts too. Uh -huh. um, would somebody else like to continue? Alguien más quiere el control? Mm. 
Nobody? Okay, Mario, you can continue if you want. Va a salir Mario super experto porque pues, de eso es la práctica hacia el maestro. Mm. Mm -hmm. Because it says next week. Uh -huh. Dice que es la próxima semana, so opens. O abre la próxima semana. Uh -huh. Okay, click next. Excellent. Oh, that's hard. Okay, excellent, Mario. Thank you so much for your participation and help. I'm going to stop sharing. Yeah, thank you. Thank you so much. Well, uh, that's a wrap up for the passive voice. We still have like two exercises pending in the presentation. So for tomorrow, is there any suggestions for tomorrow review? Direct and indirect requests and questions, transitions word or other clauses of time? Have you thought in any specific topic? For me, transitions, transition word. Mm, transition yes. words. Yes, transition words are very important when we are um, working with emails or paragraphs. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I'm going to prepare the review to continue with transition words. Okay, so thank you so much for joining today meeting and I'll see you tomorrow with more about the review. Remember to work on the platform Trabaja en la plataforma, hay que finalizarla. Todavía hay un, un, un chance, ¿verdad? Hay personas pendientes con ejercicios y con el examen final. If you need help, please let us know. Okay? I hope that you sleep well and see you tomorrow. See you tomorrow. Bye. Bye. See you tomorrow. Take care.